I'm Kyle Meredith, and uh, today I've got Cracker with me, Johnny Hickman, David Lowry. Welcome. Hey, how's it going? That's great. Uh, great to see, to see you. you both here. Congratulations on the new record. Thank you. The uh, the double album uh, as it is, yes. um, a double album on a, in a singles era. <laughs> wow, man! Like a double album in an era where people just don't put out albums for like four or five that's years at a time, right. and then we'll put out two. <laughs> it's repackaged, and yeah, I understand that. It's, you have to play. You have to play a lot on the road. You know, you go on the road a lot now because two things: it's a source of revenue, and the other thing is, uh, you know, media is really fragmented now. Sure. You know, it's like so. It's nothing like touring to promote a record, but that means you go everywhere. Now, right. So. Right, and you guys have done it okay, but they, but it is interesting, and and I know that you know, um, you've got your own philosophies on business and everything. It's been mm. very documented over the past yes, few years yes. and everything, and and, and I'm, I'm on board with you. Uh, uh. <laughs> but but it is kind of interesting when you you know look at certain bands who are who are not really going totally against the fray, but saying like, yeah, I know there are some people who is like, I'm only going to put out one EP at a time over a little bit yeah. of the era, you know, to keep it only four songs to keep the whole thing going, but just kind of dumping. I don't know how many tracks it is, all those together, and say, here you go, dive yeah. in. Who does right. a double album? We do. Yeah, that, that's right. Who does it? And I love double album. Well, I love an album to begin with, and especially thematics when that's you know belongs mm -hmm. to it. Like I feel like there's something missing in a lot of rock and roll today when you think of uh, thematics, whether it be within an album or you know stage persona or not like Kiss, sure. but or you know something like that. But you know, but an album being a beginning to an end story with a middle, right? And, you know, it, it's got a there's a reason it's sequenced a certain way and so forth. You know, yeah. Do you get did you, did you did you spend a lot of time on sequencing on this when you have that many songs? Is there a way to really sequence that um, to find the the arc or whatever? Sort <laughs> of. Um, I spend a lot of time. I think the best place to listen to music is when you're driving, and I have a. I have a fondness for the Chevy Silverado stereo, so, <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I, that's what I listen to everything in to see if the sequence is right. So yeah. I spend a lot of times on the belt road, Beltway around uh, Richmond, Virginia, uh -huh. or the Beltway that also goes around Athens, Georgia, my two homes, mm -hmm. and uh, just like let's try out the sequence. <laughs> 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 and and I just I really do I have a fondness for the stereo system in the Chevy Silverado. This is not an endorsement, by the way. It's just, <laughs> I just to me it's like you mix on these certain kinds of speakers and you go out and right. listen to it in a, in this particular. And it it sounds differently. Right. It's amazing yeah. how a song can feel <clears throat> differently just because right. you listen to it. Somewhere and and else. you also have to get the road rumble in there and the background sure. noise and make sure it all. It, oh, well, that's how, that's how your fans are going to hear it. That's right. That, that's that's absolutely right. People spend a lot of times listening to music while they're commuting. And uh, anyway, so that's just a yeah. little aside. That's there, the nerd part of making yeah, an album, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. It, it reminded me though. There was a part, you know, all the old school A and R guys way back in the mm -hmm. day. You know, you, you'd be like, "Well, I need a better recording," and they'd always say, "No, I can. If it's a good song, I'll hear it." Right. Yeah. And I always thought that's bullshit uh -huh. because uh -huh. that, that's not. You could if it's on the wrong thing, it's it's it <laughs> totally blows it. Yeah. yeah. You guys probably know more about that. Well, than and, and there was also the thing too is these these A and R guys would take. Uh, a cassette and cassettes you know depending on where the azimuth was adjusted they could sound totally different mm -hmm. like where the center of the tape was adjusted mm -hmm. it would sound totally different so these guys would go this mix sounds terrible <laughs> and you'd spend like fifteen hundred dollars remixing something then you'd find out it's like can I listen to what you're listening to it on? It's like, no, 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 we're going to get you a new cassette deck. We're going to get you, like, anyway, long, long story. But there was a lot of money wasted on just simply people sure. not having their stereo systems adjusted properly and stuff like that that were executives in the music business. Or really Have funny. you seen the rise of the cassettes again? Well, oh, yeah. Have you seen that happening? My is son's is that one a bit yeah. mind-blowing to you? Well, I, I can understand the return to vinyl. Right. But the return to cassette worries me because of that <laughs> azimuth problem I'm talking about right now. Is is like, cassettes were the bane of my existence for so many oh, years sure. as an artist was like... No, no, no! Please, please don't let us make. Please just come to the studio and listen to this mix. I'm not. I don't want to curry over a cassette because I know it's going to get played on this bad sound system. As uh, anyway, how far we've come. Yes, how far we've come. Well, I want to do. Also, want to congratulate you guys. I know it's also the uh, kind of a banner year. The 25 years you've made yeah. it a quarter of a century. You're as a as a. As not a, a, so much well, a band as a 
as a duo that has a band that surrounds it. Sure. Okay. That's what little semantics we've always in it, right. So, yeah. We've always set this up as just just me and Johnny, mm-hmm. and then we have this kind of amorphous group of people mm-hmm. that work with us. And I mean, we're playing with a great lineup tonight. Right. Don't 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 get me wrong. Like what these guys do is important, but it's always. <clears throat> We we just like we just organize we organize ourselves like a tech startup, mm-hmm. right? We have very <laughs> little <on>. overhead, <laughs> right? It's the two of us, you know. It's all in the ideas. It's sort of, uh, you know, the, the, we can we can expand and contract the size of our business yeah. very rapidly. We can work with different people if we're going to go in a different direction, you know. So we do this Bakersfield record right. with these guys from Athens, Georgia, who are fabulous, you know, fabulous players, really great players. And it turns out they can also play the rock side too. Once we took them out on the road, we're oh, like, yeah, wow, absolutely, holy crap, yeah. you know. It's <laughs> like, so yeah, it's always been the two. We did that mm-hmm. because we were in bands with six people, mm-hmm. both of us yeah. before yeah. this band, which is easy to fall apart. Democracy yeah. did, really yeah. doesn't work yeah. in a band. It's, it's, it's a fallacy. When you have like six people <laughs> and a democracy in a band, what really what it is is you just sort of have anarchy, and then every once in a while somebody seizes power for a while, and then something gets done. Right. Yeah, and then uh, you kind know, of a like herd a mentality hoonda, a little bit. You know? yeah, uh, like, yeah. Yeah, you know, and then yeah, and then you sort of yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. you move on from there. Well, it's interesting though when you talk about being in any kind of band for a certain time. Is it well for this long? I should say because when you start out, you know, when you're a young guy, and you know, if they say, "Well, rock and roll is a young man's game," for whatever that means, that you seem to be doing, you know, well <laughs> enough. Um, you look great, is what okay. I'm getting. <laughs> but uh, but you know when, when you when you start out, you know a band, I, I guess, means something different when you're a teenager, when you're in your yeah. early twenties, than what it's it means you against, now. You and your friends against the world, it, and it, I understand that it is I right, and, and, and so that's changed. And so what might be is like, you know, what you want to do at a certain point. Like, does it? When does it turn into like, well, this is my job. You know, this is what I do now. Well, it's less of like being a job as that you you reckon once you've been in bands for a while, you recognize there's usually a songwriting core. Yeah. Right, and there's then there's kind of the players and the, the you know they add to the arrangement and the recordings, right? Well, the the you have to so you know that's why this is the songwriting course. So that's why we did it this way. Is um, you just realize after a while that that's the, the creative core has to be uh, is a special thing separate from the band, right? Right. And you can and keep so, creating, but yeah. but like like does muscle memory that kicks in at some point? You know, when you're 20 years in on playing. Oh yeah, I you know, if you're gonna play low every night, you know, yeah. like I, I guess what I'm getting to really is, you know, when you're doing it that long, and and it, and it becomes from the fiery passion of the creation of that yeah. song till this is 2015, and I'm going to play low again, low uh, again tonight. Right. Like, it, do you even have to try to connect with that to make the crowd happy, or or is it just like if I play it, you're gonna be fine, and and everybody's okay with that? Uh, no, I think there's a there's a real psychology to presenting your song uh, there's a real psychological trip as a performer to presenting that song to the audience and to yourself mm-hmm. as if you've never played it publicly before like it's, you can do uh, acting right it's yeah the, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah but but it's a little trick and it's kind of fun to do if you if you're in a good mood <laughs> okay, I mean, there's some nights you're not in a good mood. You're like, oh god, these people are yelling for low, and we got to play that again. <laughs> yeah, so they're drunk we purposely again. Put in different places so imagine right, that right. we're in a bar and they're drunk. You know, it's like things that you just really shouldn't get mad about. But uh, uh, yeah, but there is a tr- kind of a trick to it, and yeah. I like the challenge of it. But it also helps that, like, right now we're out playing. We're playing with the Bakersfield guys, mm-hmm. and they didn't know that they were going to be playing these songs. So they're pretty enthusiastic about these songs that oh, they grew right. up on, right? right. So, New energy, as they say. So yeah. that helps us too. You're talking about growing up on it. Like, there's the the girl who covered "Low," Sarah R- Rochelle. Yeah. Yes, think. yeah. Great it's little cover. Cool. Very yeah. fantastic. Mazzy like, starish yeah, that yeah, she's yeah, doing yeah. with that. Yeah. But you, the, it, you've gotten to the point now where this song, you know, the kids that are playing this song now, they weren't they weren't around. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, and and that must be a trip that when you go out there, like you can be tired of that song but then realizing like yeah. they just discovered it yeah you know in all of the songs you know besides low you know i mean you guys have so many fantastic it's it's songs. really a good feeling to look out and see a 22 23 year old knows every word i'm not because they found us through low or euro trash girl yeah but they're singing along with other ones like 
Okay, I guess we've been around long enough where the cyclical the cycle has happened. And yeah, it's 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 kind of satisfying and cool. Yeah. And you can see it in the other bands that's coming out too. I, I, I mean, yeah. when I look at Deer Tick and mm-hmm. and a little bit Dawes, I mean, there is yeah. that. A uh, yeah, trend that's coming around, you know, whatever version of Americana you want to yeah. call that, mm-hmm. you know, that yeah. you guys can look out and say, eh, yeah, I'm part of that family tree. Yeah, yeah. there's part, you know, part of the that. neoclassical <laughs> Americana movement. I think that's what that. I'm neoclassical to Americana, Americana <laughs> movement. <laughs> what part of the <laughs> CD <laughs> store is that? Is yeah, that? I don't know, <laughs> but we are going to just subdivide it's it farther, farther. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's interesting that that's. That's I mean, really I love it. It's some growing. of my favorite bands right yeah. now. Well, you know, it we had honest. Robbie, uh, our keyboard player from the Bakersfield lineup, went to Europe, and so we actually mm-hmm. had Robbie play with us, play keyboards with us from Deer Ticks. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and it's great fun because he's he Canadian, so every night we <laughs> said that we had so uh, we had so much fun with him. So with these, re- with this new record, Canadian. I guess, and, and so fast forward back to the present at yeah. least, uh, but taking all of that context there. You know, to stay hungry in, in your writing, and, and I know if you're a, a musician and, and a lifer musician, it's not really anything that you can do against it for a lot of people. Like this is what you do; you have to create without thinking about it. But at the same time, you must have—I mean, you must have to push yourself a little bit every now and then to to stay hungry, to find that uh, inspiration. I suppose. Well, yeah, but you know, if you want to prove, <laughs> like I say that about the Stones, yeah, by yeah, the yeah, way, yeah, or yeah, anybody, no, no, yeah. yeah. But, but but no, it's uh, I get it, but also too, you know, there you're const- you're constantly challenged as an artist to to basically like you know present your bona fides, right? right, right. You know, like you've got to. Why are you still relevant? I mean, that's essentially mm. when you're out there touring. And, you know, the press, radio, and all that stuff, people want to know why you're still relevant. I mean, that's fundamentally the... the I'm not trying to that, say that, by the way. No, that's, no, I yeah. know that. <laughs> but that's the that's the subtext. Gotcha. Right? right? After right. you've been around for 20, 25 well, I guess years. that's nice and that so, you can keep fighting in yeah, that way. Sure. Like, well, you know, people yeah. ask us, you know, well, are, you know, how do you avoid becoming one of those bands that just gets together and goes and plays the fair mm. or the this yeah, or the plays that? The you hits. know, yeah, plays their damn hits. Uh be by constantly reinvent reinventing yourself a little bit, and yeah. you know, like you yeah, said, well, why don't we split it into two records? Really? Well, all right, you know, it's yeah. you know, <laughs> you yeah, just gotta the... you gotta, gotta keep that wheel turning and 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 present it in a new way, and uh, you know, keep moving forward. Don't get don't let yourself get stagnant. You know, yeah, you know, and you do it very impressively. Yeah, just, you know, move yeah, in a different direction with, with the songs and with the lyrics. Like I got curious, like like so these these songs were probably. By the time it comes out and where the record is now, I'm guessing these songs are written a couple of years ago at this point, at least uh, for a some year. Some of them started, yeah, probably. And you know, I was doing that. Yeah, uh, uh, some of them probably go back about two and a half years yeah. now. So you open the paper today, or three, maybe. and you see the news. What are you going to write about right now? Uh, is is there a Trump song in the mix? Is this? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's interesting. I, I we did four. I did. Between Camper Van Beethoven and Cracker, I did four discs of music right, that right. came out within twenty months of I mean, that's each other. like it's like Prince Ryan Adams style uh, yeah, 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 songwriting. Yeah, yeah right. output. So yeah. I actually sort of like been giving myself a little bit of a break from songwriting, although I did me and Jonathan did two tracks for the new Sharknado movie. Which is a great song, by the way. (laughs) Long way to go. uh, Yeah, yeah. and that was easy because they basically told us what to write about. We need one, like, beach fun, and then the Sharknado's coming. (laughs) And we need another one that... (laughs) Can you do it from the perspective of the shark? Part of the history (laughs) now of you Uh, is involved with Sharknado 3. Yes, but you know uh, what? That actually, if we could go back into time in time to the starting of Camper Van Beethoven. And we knew that we would eventually put a song in the most tongue-in-cheek, B-horror movie, right. monster movie of its day. You know, that, you know, 35 years later. That I mean, we would, <laughs> I would assume that we were starting with Camper Van Beethoven, that you would eventually be putting music in the biggest B-horror, you know, self-consciously bad like monster movie of 2015, we'd say, "Oh yes, we have achieved our 35 <laughs> year plan." That's just, that's this is the culmination of what we were trying to do. Well, congratulations! But, yes, so we you've can done stop it now. <laughs> Gold, platinum <laughs> records, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> you're good. Yeah, you're good. So right. no, that that's amazing. Yeah, I, I, but I do. I, I wonder if it's if it's going to kick in with your songwriting then, especially as we go into, you know, uh, the season that we're about to go we're into. We're going with to everything. Go, yeah. yeah, like that's like at some point, one of you is going to get pissed off, mm-hmm. and the pin's going to hit the paper. Or it could go in a totally different direction. Yeah, you know, my kids are becoming teenagers now. Um, there's lots of really interesting things I'm having to deal with. But we, we, we just did some shows with Ike Riley. He's got mm-hmm. this amazing song. Sometimes another songwriter will inspire me to do something. Ike Riley, we covered him on Duty Free. He's got this amazing song in his new record called You Were Born on Fire. Mm-hmm. And it's just sort of this di- this this conversation that he's having it's real life like he has with one of his sons you know and it's just he's got a whole album out of it right, right. So start like, cribbing from that right there it's like yeah. well you know sometimes it's back to the personal sure you know sure. right about what's actually so yeah, you know yeah. it's, it's yeah. right about, what about yeah i mean you haven't had a solo record out in three years now it's, yeah, yeah. Start, start thinking yeah, about it's that it's probably you know, due time as well he we, we starts working with camper he's mm-hmm. got something else going on i'm like yeah well, there's some ideas and sometimes those songs end up Mm-hmm. Cracker versions of them later too, right. you know. So that's kind of that's kind of cool. It's just nice having all of that around you guys, where you know it's you can filter that out however you nice. I mean, a lot of bands don't have that luxury, and that's yeah, yeah well, it's cool to see that happen. So, congrats, thank the you. New record. It was great talking to you both. Thank you, and we'll see you around next time. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you, Carl. That's it.